So like I said in the last video, this video is mostly going to be shaping the body and that's kind of a process of trial and error for me. I just kind of go with what I like and then if I don't like it, I usually just chop pieces off and then start again. So on the base, I was basically turning all those bulbous areas into flat areas. So I'm just removing the rounded part um, and flattening everything out, which I ended up liking a lot more than the bulbous look. This is pretty easy because I already had it shaped. So I was using an angle grinder to remove the bulk and then using a belt sander to really flatten everything out. And I just did that on all four sides. Um, once the top had been cut, it, that was already pretty, pretty well finished off. You could see how it's now flat and not rounded. Then while I had this um, on the table, I decided to cut that um, slight recess for a quarter inch piece of Luon that I'm going to screw into the bottom to hold the weight and the bomb on that base. And I did that using a three quarter inch straight bit and my router jig with the plexiglass bottom so I could see it and just cut that. I free handed the sides and that turned out well. Um, and I just did the front and the back to create that recess. You can see how that piece fits in there. There's also a little slot on the one side that's hard to see so that you could pop that piece out with a screwdriver. So then while the headpiece was still kind of, uh, still a little wet, I just started playing around with smoothing over those edges and joining all um, five of those separate forms together with a chisel. I knew I was going to end up using power tools in the end, but I do like chisel work. So I started with that. And then once again, I just assembled everything and stood back from the piece to look at it and tested it again with the weight to make sure with the weight of that head on there that it would be able to hold up the gong, which it does. So then before I started gluing this together, I thought the shapes I had were fairly close to what I was going to end up with, but I ended up not loving this look once it was all together. So the first thing I did was I went through and I made those portions on the, the sweet gum much deeper. I would say at least twice as deep. So I went through and I started rounding over all those edges and forming them um, into the cherry. So then where the cherry hits the gong stand, a lot of material had to be removed just so that it was flush with the stand. So I had a straight line on there and I just used my tools and a plane to just make that curve more gradual in the back. And then once again started shaping the inside parts of those sweet, that sweet gum. I just wanted more depth in those areas. And this is really quick work with that die grinder. So at this point, I was starting to not love the shape of the head. It just reminded me way too much of a trident. And I was trying to think of ways to remove that look. And after I glued it together, which you'll see here, I did the same thing I did with the, the original arc. I counterbore that hole and then drove um, a dowel in there in order to attach everything. So once that was attached, I could I could start to really finish this up by feathering that cherry into where it meets the head of the walnut, as well as feathering that birch dovetail into the walnut, and everything be became much more streamlined. On the bottom, I was doing the exact same thing, just making it look like one continuous piece. But like I said, I knew at this point I was going to be doing something to the head because I just did not like the way it looked. So it can be a little nerve wracking to do when you've spent this much time on something, but you can see I have a pencil mark and I'm just going to chop off that middle portion to um, eliminate that, that trident sort of, every time I looked at this, I could see like um, Ariel's dad from the Little Mermaid and it was driving me nuts. So I just started cutting off those pieces and then smoothing out that section so it didn't look like I just lobbed off part of, of my project and left it out to dry. So that was just a matter of cutting off that tip and then slowly feathering the sweet gum back into the birch and create that rounded center versus um, a pointed center. So now the two edges are more prominent and that is where the two hooks are going to go to hold up the gong 
and I ended up really liking this. I was happy I cut it off. And like I said, it could be a little terrifying at first because if you don't like it, there's really no going back at that point. But it just turned, um, it just made everything look more streamlined and I ended up liking it a lot more. So then those are basically the holes I'm going to have for the pegs. And I was didn't have hooks for this yet. I didn't really know what I wanted at this point. So I thought I could get away with dowels. Dowels ended up not working, but I used those. They're half inch dowels just as prototypes. So I just uh, gradually stepped up on the holes for this and they had to be spaced a certain width apart to match the stand that she had so that her gong would hang the exact same amount off the top of the base. So with those dowels in place, I ended up having to notch them out a little bit, otherwise that rope slid off of there. I tested out the weight again. Then I started to put the finish on, and the finish for this is General Finishes um, Arm and Seal. It's a satin finish. I really like this product. It's kind of my go-to product now over polyurethane. I didn't get a ton of video of the first round of finishing, but um, you can see how nice that all looks together. So the cheapest, densest material I could think of to put in the base is going to be lead. And it turns out you can purchase um, lead shot pellets fairly cheaply at Cabela's. I got a 25 pound bag for um, like $40, I think it was. It would have been, it was shipping, it came to almost 50. It would have been cheaper if I just drove. But my Cabela's is by um, a mall and it's just traffic and congestion. So it was worth it to have it shipped. I ended up using about, I think, nine pounds of this 25 pound bag, so I'll have it for other projects. And I just kind of weighed it out into tiny sandwich bags. I think each bag held a little over three pounds. I wanted to get 10 in there, but you'll see 10 pounds ended up not fitting. So the lead was, was like I said, the densest thing to fit in that space. And then I had this little crown royal bag I thought I could put inside there just to kind of make it foolproof. I don't think she's going to be taking the weight out, but I really don't want her to have to worry about those bags breaking. But as you could see, that crown royal bag just didn't end up fitting in that space. So I ended up taking the little baggies out and I believe I don't I didn't film this whole process because it was a little bit of trial and error, but I believe I ended up putting three plastic baggies in there and I told her that they were little baggies in case she ever wanted to take them out. And because um, the first trial, it did not stand with the weight I had in there. So that's why I had to remove the bag and add a little bit more lead and then it stood, but it was a little rocky. I was nervous about it tipping backwards. So at this point I had to compromise largely and I ended up putting almost like a sissy bar on the back of, of this piece. Um, I really didn't want to do this. I liked the streamlined look of it, but I also didn't want to have to worry about this falling over. With that little um, wedge in the back, you don't have to worry at all about this tipping backwards. And I made it out of cherry at first, which was just a huge oversight. So it stuck out like a sore thumb. Before I finished it, I replaced it with walnut and you could see, you could barely see it once it's walnut and matches, matches the arch. So it was a compromise, but it's also a good peace of mind with the weight in that wedge. This really doesn't move at all. So I epoxy that in place and then, um, I started, I sanded this, I sanded all of these in between finishes. Um, the first sand was to about 200 and then I put a coat on and then in between all these I sand with 600 grit sandpaper and the finish just comes out really smooth. Remove all the, the dust with, with mineral spirits and then you could put on another coat. This was a nice piece because it's so small, it was easy to finish. Um, the only spot I really had to worry about drips was the, the finish would kind of pool in those top recesses and drip down the back. So I always did that first in order to make sure I got all those drips before everything was done. So then um, I only film I think three coats of the five. The last couple coats are basically skim coats. So these are the hooks I got for holding up the gong. They're out exterior grade planter hooks, but I liked the detail on the front. Um, the, like I said, I didn't like the dowel. So these, I just chopped off that 
bracket that you would use to mount it to the wall and they would slide into my holes perfectly and hold up the weight once again. Now I ended up epoxying those into play. I ended up removing, I think it's a powder coating on the outside. I ended up removing that um, from where it goes into the piece and then epoxying those into place. I don't show that on film. I didn't put those on until the end. And then once again, sanded the whole piece and then reapplied the finish. So this I believe is the third coat. And by the time I got to the third and fourth coat, I found it was easiest to do this on the ground so that I could hit the top of it. Um, my shop, I don't have a ton of space, so I usually kind of work with what I, I have, but another larger piece moved out of my shop during this process. So you'll see I was able to move it to the ground and, and it was easier to put that finish on. Also at this point, that weight is permanently in the base. You could take it out if you want, but I think the final weight on this, I did weigh it. It was about 25 pounds. So I think most people are going to be able to lift that up without too much of a problem. And then I had something in my shop that looked kind of like a gong in order for taking pictures. So I tested that out once I had those pieces um, epoxied in place. So then I just took a bunch of pictures in my shop and it's hard to photograph stuff in my shop because the background is is so cluttered but um i was fairly happy with how this turned out there are definitely some things i would change um, a lot of those changes would have been just making my life easier with the physics of the stand if the base was a little bigger it could hold a little more weight there wouldn't have been as much troubleshooting as i had on this project but i like the um building this way i like a more uh, sculptural aspect to the furniture and that is mainly reliant on having an awesome client who gives you who gives you creative license to to play around with the design and create what you want she basically told me what she wanted she told me what she didn't want and to to run with the design and make something um, unique